the hell are you doing? I ain't nowhere to board a train, you damn stupid n- Well, he might could have said nincompoop. We ain't no nincompoop. I really wanted to hear about kind of the training behind the fight scene you did with Zazie. I just love seeing that hand to hand in a film um, with everybody shooting each other. Uh, it, it was it was it was fun, if you um, if you will, <laughs> because you don't normally get to see that type of fight scene um, with two women. Usually in a story like this, when you have the the, the two characters uh, with Rufus and Nat, you, one would think that it would have been between the two of them. So we got a chance to play. It's actually, I think like the only real sort of extended bit of like fighting that isn't sort of more in a gun, gun slinging sort of nature. We, you know, we took a few weeks to rehearse that and to really land sort of the movements on it and feeling safe with each other. Um, and I think that was a really lovely thing for our relationship on set and after set, like that was one of the last things we shot and it was sort of, I think it was the last thing she shot and she was able to go and like put Trudy to bed essentially. And, you know, it was like, it was a cool thing to, do with her and have you know our characters sort of culminate into that scene and we didn't have as much time as we would have liked to to prepare for that because we were shooting during a pandemic and i think that zazie and i approached that scene that way that even though we don't have the time or space to prep nothing is going to stop us from making this scene believable and gritty and and, and dirty and you know Everything that you love about fight scenes, we wanted it to be. I heard Rufus Buck was back. So ain't no road to ask a friend to travel. You think Destiny's coming to you? My guns go back. I felt like the first scene that the two of you were in together, there was so much emotion going into it and like it was very clear that these two people had a past it was like all in the way that you looked at each other and i'm just curious how you went about like putting all the different layers on screen so uh, jonathan is really great at being um i don't know he's very detail oriented in his work which is something i like to do as well we both talked about what mine and his past could have been what essentially was the moment before of this encounter and how I would have felt, how he would have felt, how much time had passed since we'd last seen each other, what the conditions were. And so I think we were both, even though those things are never alluded to directly in the film, I think they it is important as an actor to know what happens before. It really, you know, even if it seems like superfluous work, honestly, it really does inform what you're doing in the present. It was kind of like marriage counseling, kind of the way we kind of went at it. It was like, so how, why do we stay together? What is it about the other person, you know, and to then articulate that? But, and you just pull from your own life, what makes a man, you know, travel across the country and then when it's all said and done, go back to her? And why not her, you know? And what makes her not wait for him, but not shut him out? Yeah. What makes it incapable? What makes her incapable of shutting him out? And what makes him incapable of staying away? And we just we just we just explored that, you know. Um, and that was the that was the the fulcrum of uh Stage Coach Mary and, and that love. So we were trying to be really clear about what that was. So uh, we had that story in our heads and I think we're able to create a moment that, you know, wasn't just like, oh, they're meeting again, but felt hopefully a bit more significant <laughs> than that, I, I suppose. Man, old devil, this is gonna be Buck's last day amongst the living. What exactly he do to you? Call it a professional robbery. Did you always have the, um, the twist at the end in mind? Did you always have that or was it kind of more throughout? Cause I feel it's just full of surprises the whole way, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, so without giving away any spoilers, uh, right. I always had that. That was for me. Um, the end of the movie is the is almost like the point of the whole journey, the point of the whole story. Um, I always had that in mind before I started writing the script. 
I knew how it would I knew how it would end uh, the film. I think that's probably with all the things that I create. I always kind of know the end point, even sometimes before I know the start point. And um, and that was the motivation for telling this particular story. You know, part of the trick of I think playing someone that's a bad guy, and you know, yo, he's the bad guy. Something's gonna happen. Is trying to make that character believable. Uh, relatable and to some degree likable, right? That's the trick, you know, and I thought that knowing what we know about the character or you and I know now after seeing the film, uh, it, was a, it was a conversation about how we subvert the bad guy stuff. So we don't have to play, we don't have to over sense, over, over. he's bad, he's to some degree been incarcerated for a long time um, and has a real vengeance in his heart. But this, but we don't know why, right? And then obviously, you know, working with uh, James uh, and Jonathan, you know, we as brothers just, you know, tore that apart and we revealed ourselves not only as actors, but as characters within that, that scene. It was really all about Driss. It was really all about Rufus Buck, right? And listening and, and to have a great deal of restraint to continue to listen, because that's how I was going to tell my part of the story. Mm -hmm. It was only what he could give me in that moment that would allow me to respond truthfully. Otherwise, it's pre-baked. So it was a great deal of trust in Driss as Rufus Buck and a great deal of uh, restraint on my end uh, artistically to stay in it and not jump to conclusions. Open it. I'm gonna play for you our first tune. It's called Let's Start What We Have Come Into the Room to Do. Right on. In my life, it's very rare to get to be in a room full of black people, and but whenever it happens, it's so magical. So I'm just curious about the experience on set with all this excellence around, just kind of how did that feel like for you? It was wonderful to, you know, it was cool also to have, you know, I think we talk a lot about like representation in, in front of the camera, uh, but we had so much also behind it as well. You know, our director is black, we had black producers um, and a lot of the crew, you know, was diverse. Um, I, I think that element of it was also really cool to really feel like, oh, we're all really doing this together and telling a story of all of us together. And also it made me feel like we're not necessarily representing the black experience as like a monolith because we have all these different um, experiences coming together and uh, creating sort of, yeah, sort of a, a blend of all of us. And, you know, all these characters are so specific and we're all bringing different things to them. And that was really cool and empowering for me. And I feel like, you know, I hope that comes across. Just with having a career um, as wonderful and established as you have had, can you talk through some of the positive changes you've seen um, in terms of like more people of color being behind the camera now that maybe weren't super present when you got started. Yeah, look, I, I, I'm, I'm an optimist, okay? So my, my answer might be annoyingly for some optimistic, you know, I definitely see some changes. I've seen a lot of changes, in fact. And not only have I seen changes from essentially the door being locked on us and the door being opened, but I see the people on the outside creating their own doors, creating their own paths, going, you know what? We ain't knocking on the door no more, doing their own thing. And that's super encouraging. That's like, okay, you know, someone's thinking here. We don't have to keep knocking here. I also think there's a lot to, to go, you know, this cannot be the first Western that shows historically black characters in the first, for the first time. But it turns out it is the first Western that's done that. And we have to get past that cycle. So I am encouraged, you know, there is movement in the right direction. I know who you are. The angel who hunts down those who trespass against him with no mercy. Hey!